You're not getting anywhere with this von Borschert. You know, I kind of get the same feeling, my dear Sarah. Listen. Nothing. Not a sound. No one's coming to save you. Huh. That's what you think. The Golden Order knows exactly where we are. <laughs> By the time your ridiculous secret society turns up, I'll be long gone. As for you, nothing will remain of your body. If you touch a single hair of my mother's head, I'll skin you alive. You know, Louis, I have no intention of beating your dear mother. There are more persuasive ways of making you talk. You've stolen something from me that I intend to get back. Where have you hidden it? Von Borschert, you can't sell that book on the black market anymore. This is finished. We know you're planning on selling it at one of Lord Mortimer's parties. All right? Just tell us who the buyer is and we can make a deal. You've no idea of the trouble you've gotten yourselves into. Oh, but you will tell me where it's hidden. I can promise you that. Oh, stop annoying our host, Louis. Son, didn't what happened to you in Rome teach you anything? Just a few more minutes and my concoction will be ready. With this, your bodies will dissolve in less than four hours. You'll see. It loosens tongues in no time. You know, I have to admit, Mother, the only thing you've ever taught me is that damn motto of yours. Always remain rational and open. I got it. I've opened our shackles. Draw him over here. I'll take care of him. Von Borchard! Von Borchard! Hmm? Listen, let's make a deal. I'll tell you where the book is if you let my mother go free. Oh, what are you playing at? Don't worry, mother. You want to play the hero. Pity you're not in any position to do so. For the lime. Where is Alazif? Let me do this. Trust me. Please, be my guest, Mother. Mm. Ah. Ah. Well done, Louis. You reacted perfectly. How do you feel, Mother? Couldn't be better. He's alive, so I can question him after we get back. 
Pity he's just a middleman. Hmm. Means I haven't finished with this case. Oh, I had a feeling you'd be running off on one of your adventures again, Mother. You know what? I'm warning you. This time, I'm coming with you. No. Even though you impress me more and more, I have to do this on my own. Mother, you're no spring chicken anymore. Come on, let's go home. And don't forget to send our men to tend to Von Borchardt. Well done, Mother. You just had to pick up Von Burchard's trail on your own, didn't you? You ditch me in Paris with no explanation, and off you go to infiltrate one of the world-renowned receptions of this Lord Mortimer? And now he writes me to say that you've gone missing on his private island? Which, by the way, looks more like a big rock than a paradise island. The least he could do is explain to me how he managed to lose you. In any case, it is time for you to stop all this, Mother. It no longer suits your age. Well, I'm sure I'll find you once again, slogging through the caves beneath the island, searching for some long-lost mystical object that you just can't live without. I'm already hating this trip, and all I've done is think about it. Contrary to what one may be able to imagine, it was not the host himself who invited me. Well now, Duchess, we find ourselves both invited by Sir Horn. Well, how very amusing. Perhaps we have some common interests, Your Eminence. Is this your first time at one of Lord Mortimer's legendary parties? Oh, no. We have been friends since long ago. But as I'm doing some business with Sir Horn, the invitation came from him. Well, I simply can't wait for all the festivities to begin. And you, good sir, what brings you here? Lord Mortimer asked me to join him. We have some business to take care of. Oh, how mysterious. You adapt quickly, my son. You get along here like a fish in water. Would you believe that we are all here hoping to solve our personal issues? You'll see. Right. I doubt that you came here to look for your mother, your eminence. Anyway, consider yourself fortunate, young man, because there are many who dream of simply one day setting foot on this island. And only a very few ever make it. Indeed, I imagine this must be your first time here. And you, Duchess? You seem to be quite accustomed to things here. Am I right? I do not think that one can ever get accustomed to what Lord Mortimer prepares for his guests. But you are right. This is not the first time I've been on this wharf. If you've come back again, I imagine you must find it to be of some interest. Here, everything is possible if you make the right choices. It really is up to you whether you leave better off or not. Please excuse me if you find me overly curious, young man. I did not mean to cause you any embarrassment. Come, Duchess. They are waiting for us. We're moving, Monsieur de Richet, if you would like to join us. I'm coming, Duchess. A cardinal? A duchess? I wonder if all the guests here are this prestigious. If I'd known, I, I would have gone for a better suit. Are you all right?
Mother? Oh shit, your hand! So? Okay, it's done. Did you put it in a safe place? Yes. I made sure no one was following me. Don't worry, Sarah, no one's going to find it. Are you absolutely sure? Yes, I'm sure. Right. Just one thing left to do. No, Mother, no, don't, don't! What? Have you lost your mind? There is no other way. If you, if you kill me, you won't find it. That is the point, my dear. No one must ever put their hands on it again. No. But I trusted you. No, sir. Don't. No. No! <gasps> you can run if you want to, Sarah. But you will pay me. You. Uh, Louis, are you all right? What's going on? Here, take this. I'm sorry. Keep it. Are you better? I'm fine. Don't worry. It's getting late. Why don't Why don't you go on ahead and I'll catch up with you, okay? Are you sure? Yes. I'm. I'm sorry. I'm sure, yes. Fine. I definitely have to find Mother quickly. Am I going crazy or, or what? This can't be real. The, the Duchess arrived with me. What's happening to me, for God's sake? I absolutely need to find you, Mother. Louis, during the trip, I had something I wanted to ask you, but we didn't happen to run into each other. Yes, Duchess? I'm not sure if you remember, but we've met before. At that time, you were of two minds as to your choice of career. Tell me, what have you been up to since?
I have been involved in all sorts of unsolved cases. Have you ever heard of the Abbey of Hexham? Uh, vaguely. An ingenious scam involving mass manipulation on a scale never seen before. Hmm. There was a cavern under the Abbey, wasn't there? Exactly. The wind would blow in through spouts, creating a, a terrifying howling sound. So, to stop the howling, the priest called for offerings from the peasants. And if they brought enough money, I'm guessing the priest stopped the howling. A perfect trick to fool simple souls. Admit it, Duchess. That story kept you in suspense, didn't it? Yes, it did. I'm delighted to find out that you were the young and brilliant French investigator. For someone who only remembers the case vaguely, your memories are very clear. Well, they say I have the memory of two people. But please, call me Emily. Fine, Emily. Tell me, I was actually helped on that case by my mother. You wouldn't know her by any chance. Wait, Louis. We've already met. You do remember me, don't you? Please excuse me, madam. I'm sure we've met before, but I don't remember where. Hmm. I appreciate your honesty, even if it's not very flattering for me. I imagine that with your beauty, madam, it's the first time a man hasn't remembered your face. Well, I must say, you make up for yourself rather elegantly. Please stop torturing me. I'm completely at your mercy. Where have we met? Four years ago, in London? No. Sorry, I, I don't remember. In the office of William Pitt. Remember? No? I'm so sorry, Emily, but I really don't remember you. Let's drop it, Louis. It doesn't matter. Right, time to go to the manor. I ask her a question, she answers with another. Is she playing with me? Emily, please excuse my insisting, but you still haven't answered about my mother. Do you know her? You'll see, Louis. Everybody here knows Sarah de Richet. I don't know where we're going like this, Emily, but you're connected to my mother one way or another. And if I can believe my vision, you don't have much of a place in her heart. Must be an incredible view from up there. Impossible to set foot on the island without being seen from 300 meters away. Good evening. 
evening, sir. May I ask your name, please? Louis Moras de Richet. Monsieur de Richet, delighted to welcome you among us, sir. You must be Sarah de Richet's son. I must tell you we are doing our utmost to find your mother as quickly as possible. What can you tell me about the disappearance of my mother? Two weeks have passed since Sir's mother went missing. All the staff here have since been busy searching every nook and cranny of the island. But Sir may rest assured, we shouldn't be long in finding her. And just what have you found so far? It would seem that Sir's mother may be hiding on the island, and regularly changing her location. But no one seems to know why she would find this behavior necessary. What do you mean? On several occasions, we have found leftovers of food, a few of her things, or even traces of campsites. The reason why we are searching the wharf again is because lights were spotted there last night. Where we are now? Indeed, sir. According to our information, lights were seen in the middle of the night, sir. After verification, none of the guests seemed to have left the manor last night. We think that perhaps sir's mother was here. Did anyone see anything else? Unfortunately not, sir. Only lights were seen by servants of the manor, sir. And as I was saying, sir, all the guests were asleep, and no one seems to have noticed anything at all. We seem to have found an object that would appear to belong to sir's mother. A handkerchief. The handkerchief is embroidered with the initials S.D.R. We came to the conclusion that they are the initials of sir's mother, Sarah de Richet. I have orders to give it to Lord Mortimer as soon as I see him. I know my mother. She's not the kind to go for a midnight stroll in the wharf for nothing. I've got to find out what the hell she was doing here. Where exactly did you find the handkerchief? On the landing dock, sir. The one you arrived by. Pass me the handkerchief. But, but, sir, my orders were to give it to my master. Are you refusing to give me my own mother's personal belongings? Even though she was greatly looking forward to meeting your master, she's gone missing. And you seem incapable of finding her. Oh, but, sir, please... And to top it all off, you refuse to give me the handkerchief that she so often let me use? Do I deserve such little consideration in your eyes? Is that what you wish me to report to your master? No, certainly not, sir. Please forgive me, sir. I have been such an idiot. Here you are. It is indeed your handkerchief, Mother. You must have come here for a specific reason. I need to know what it is. Let's think. What could she have been doing out here on this wharf? The barrel's been broken for quite some time. A wooden floorboard. Probably comes from this part of the wharf. The wood is slightly eaten away, of course, but it still would have been fine if it weren't smashed.
locked. I'll never get it open barehanded. anything to do with you, mother, but if it does, at least now you're armed. Just like in my vision. And none of it's telling me anything useful. Honey, the remedy of the gods. Hmm, this wharf is used as storage for a lot of barrels. Uh-huh. What have we here? It's cannon powder. Hmm. The powder's wet. Not surprising, given the dampness of the dog. It's unusable now. I don't know what the person who left this barrel like this had in mind, but it's a waste. Apparently, someone on this island has gone through a whole lot of trouble to arm themselves. I really must find you, dear mother. And quickly, too. Fragment of amber. Inscription. And Nessis, mi fili quantilia produncia mundus vergatur. How did Mortimer manage to build his manor at the top of a rocky outcrop? Impressive. Ah, my son, I was looking for you. What can I do for you, Your Eminence? I wanted to ask you. You are the son of Sara de Rice, aren't you? You see, your mother and I were supposed to meet here on this very spot. I was supposed to hand her a very important envelope. But I haven't seen her. If only Mother had told me why she was coming here. Anyway, I ought to take the envelope. It might have something to do with her disappearance. Listen, if it will help, you can always give it to me.
Thank you, my son. I'll bear that in mind. I'd rather deal with her directly. Don't take it personally. Would you happen to know if your mother has arrived yet? Certainly, Your Eminence. Mother got here some time ago. I was hoping to find her when I arrived, but given the hour, she must be asleep by now. Right. I shall see her tomorrow, then. By the way, Your Eminence, I wasn't aware you knew my mother. Ah, if you only knew my son, I hold your mother in the highest regard. She has rendered great service to the church, and her help is invaluable. I hope that you will follow in her footsteps. If only she had told me where she was headed. Nevertheless, our exchanges have always been discreet, and I should like them to remain as such. If your mother wishes to speak to you about us one day, I will not mind if she does so. That is very commendable. But since we work together on a daily basis, it's, it's surely just an oversight. Most certainly. You said you work together. What do you do, exactly? If you know my mother, you will understand that I cannot answer you, Your Eminence. I'm sorry, but... Do not worry, my son. I perfectly understand, and I expected nothing less from you. Discretion and secrecy are both pillars of the organizations for which we work. You are the worthy son of Sela. All the same, it bothers me to see you in a quandary, Your Eminence. Is there any other solution? Look. If it's of any help, you can always leave your envelope with me, and I'll give it to her as soon as I see her. Ah, uh, I hesitate. Up till now, we have always dealt with her in person, and that has always been successful. Do you think I should give it to you? Look, you seem hesitant. The simplest thing to do is just to give it to her when you see her. After all, it's not that urgent. Yes. I mean, yes, it's urgent. I mean, what if we don't find each other here on the island? Though I don't know yet when I'll be leaving. I might not be staying for very long. Hmm, what to do? Can you see a solution? Come on. Just give me the letter for crying out loud. I cannot run the risk alone. I am going to trust you. You seem like an honest man. Bingo! Listen to me, my child. If I give you the letter, can you promise me before God that no one other than your mother will I swear by the Almighty God to honor the promise that no one but my mother shall cast her gaze upon your letter. Good. Listen, let's stop there. I'm going to tell you a secret, Monsieur de Vichy. 
Your mother and I are organizing the escape of a large number of French priests who face a massacre organized by the cursed Republican tribunals. The church is literally being bled like a beast. Without your mother, Hundreds of men of the cloth would have gone to the guillotine. She has made the services of your order available to us by organizing the priest's safe passage across the borders. Even if she does not share all our convictions, she always provided assistance. Young man, you can be proud to be her son. Be it only for her sake. Always respect your name. Here. The letter I spoke of. It includes a list of about 15 names ready for departure. Be quick. Remember to tell Sarah when you see her. That time is short. Well played. I'll decide later when I'm alone whether to look at what it contains. Lives of the Noble Greeks and Romans by Plutarch, a biography of the great men. He opened Brutus's page. Caesar, stabbed by multiple blows at once, sees Brutus raise the dagger on him. Then, covering his head with his robe, he delivers himself to the arms of the conspirators. Nice family. Let's keep it. Might come in handy someday. Blind Oedipus. Blinded himself. What a tragic destiny. Saturn devouring his son. Good God, how awful. Everything in this painting is disturbing. It's the first time I've seen brushstrokes like this. Crucifixion of St. Peter. He was crucified upside down, out of humility. Surprising for an entrance hall. Fall of the Damned by Rubens. The man who cannot achieve the salvation of God the Father is offered to fall into the depths of the abyss. Well, maybe I should introduce myself to the other guests first.
I thought my chimney was big, but this one is beyond belief. It's the least one can say. I've been longing for a warm fire for ages. Since I set foot on the island, I haven't ventured more than two yards away from it. Have you also just arrived? Oh, late morning, I'd say. Louis, come join us. Monsieur, may I introduce you to Monseigneur His Eminence, Cardinal Piaggi? He joins us straight from Rome. Oh, just call me Your Eminence. It's simpler. George Washington, President of the United States of America. Delighted at last to make your acquaintance, Mr. President. Pleased to meet you, Mr. President. Louis Moras de Richet. It is an honor to meet you. Young man, let's keep it simple, please. Let us forget our fancy titles. Nice to meet you, Louis. I should imagine you never thought you'd be in such company. I must admit that I didn't. It's the first time that I've ever met so many illustrious personalities. And you haven't seen anything yet. Generally, when Lord Mortimer organizes one of his receptions, there are over a dozen people here. They can't all be here yet. And you'll see, most of the time there's only the upper crust. And I noticed you were already getting to know his eminence at the entrance. It's the perfect place to build up a network. What were you talking about, if you forgive my indiscretion? At the risk of disappointing you, we weren't conspiring in our corner, sir. His eminence was simply telling me that he knew my mother and how much he held her in high esteem. It so happens that Monsieur de Riche's mother is to join us. Oh, pity. No scrumptious gossip or juicy tidbits, unmentionable secrets, or even money matters. But you'll see, it will come. Despite all the goodwill in the world, you can't stop people scheming left and right around oh, here. Speak for yourself, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, my friends, do any of you know the reason why we're here this time? Not in the slightest. As for me, I've been invited by Sir Horn, a close friend of Lord Mortimer, but uh, I do not know the reason why. You see, Louis, every time Lord Mortimer organizes a reception, he always finds a moment to set up a chat with all the guests. During which time we remake the world. Accompanied by gallons of absinthe and cussing, I'll leave you to imagine the result. So, if I understand rightly, Monsieur de Richer, you've come out here to join your mother. For what reason, exactly? Like you, Mr. President, I'm here as a result of Lord Mortimer's invitation. Two members of the same family here. That is rare. You know what they say. You can pick your nose, but you can't pick your family. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, though, I know your mother well. Stay behind with me afterwards, and we'll take a moment to speak about her. my friends. Holy shit. That's the man for my vision. An urgent case has delayed our host, Lord Mortimer. He can't be present this evening, and he sends his deepest apologies. He's asked me here and he hasn't even turned up? Great start. And now, my dear guests, a light meal is served in the small salon. For those who would like to, you're invited to follow me into the next room. My dear fellow, you must have read my thoughts. I shall follow. We'll have to be careful not to make too much noise. One of Lord Mortimer's guests is relaxing. Oh, we shall be quiet. Don't take it the wrong way, Sir Holm, but I have already eaten. Thus, I shall be happy to remain by the fireside. If you don't mind, Gregory, I should like to keep Mr. Washington company. Please feel at home. And you, sir? If I stay with Washington, We'll be able to speak about my mother. But on the other hand, I'd like to learn more about this home. I saw him in my vision. Let's see what Washington has to say. Sir, if you don't mind, 
I shall stay here. Do exactly as you please, young man. Louis, thank you for staying. Just like you, when I arrived this morning, I found out that Sarah had gone missing. I know your mother well. Don't worry. Emily is from the English branch of the Golden Order. And President Washington is in fact the leader of the Order in the United States. I, I didn't know. Sorry to have made you wait, but I didn't want to speak in front of the others. You did well. Secrecy and discretion are the pillars of our organization. If I can help in any way at all, please don't hesitate to ask, my lad. And if you have any other questions, now's the time. And you, Emily, what do you think of my mother? I only know her through the Order. The one time we met, we only exchanged a few words in a corridor of Parliament. And was the exchange courteous or impassioned? I'm not sure if I understand. Was there any reason for her to be angry with you? Under other circumstances, I would slap your face for even asking. But I'll put your lack of tact down to her disappearance. Know that your mother is a woman I would love to work with. Her reputation is entirely deserved. Mr. Washington will be able to tell you more. Mr. Washington, you seem to be very familiar with my mother. Where did you first meet her? I met Sarah during the War of Independence on American soil. She was introduced to me by a mutual acquaintance and I must say that her sound advice prevented me from making some terrible mistakes. She may not be a soldier, but believe me, she deserves a statue as much as Lafayette does. Well, I didn't see that one coming. There's no doubt Mother has many secrets that are still hidden. Right. Would it be too much if I asked you a few more questions? Not at all. Go ahead. But I can't promise I'll remember everything. May I ask, when you saw each other, what did you talk about? My mother has always been fascinated by strange powers. Did she talk to you about anything like that? Yes. Her facility for discerning truths from rumor served me well. Such as preventing massacres like the one at Salem from happening again, or convincing people that horsemen cannot ride around without heads. <laughs> what was it that she used to say now? Keep an open and logical mind? Yes, that's it. Thank you, sir. I was hoping to speak with Lord Mortimer. At least now I have some information, thanks to you. I repeat, Lord Mortimer is a man of his word. You won't be disappointed. And I am persuaded that your mother's research is his main concern. Mother still is at the head of the Golden Order. I find it difficult to believe that she came to this island without notifying the other members. As for myself, I did not know. I am here at the request of Sir Holm, a situation regarding the Crown of England to resolve, and to see what Lord Mortimer has to propose to us. As for me, Lord Mortimer asked me here to speak about the future of America. I did not know that your mother would even be among us. In any case, no one has yet mentioned associating the Order. We haven't found many clues yet. Don't worry, Louis. I'm sure nothing bad has happened to her. Yes, I, I hope not.
careful, they're coming back. Well, I am impressed with all this splendor. But don't spend too much time with Mr. Washington, my dear, or you'll lose your pretty accent. <laughs> <laughs> you seem to be intrigued by that statue. Absolutely. It is remarkable. Lord Mortimer is fond of atypical works of art. I won't disguise the fact that I find it all a little megalomaniacal. But I must say, he does have some outstanding pieces. So, Holm, who was that young lady with you? Elizabeth Adams, Mr. President. She would have liked to have stayed with us, but the poor thing is exhausted. Elizabeth Adams? Miss Adams is here to rest. You have perhaps already come across her in the corridors. She arrived a few days ago. I perceived her, but we weren't introduced. Rest assured, she is not here for the same reasons as yourselves. Consequently, I'm counting on your indulgence. On that note, it's very late. You must be exhausted. The servant will accompany you to your room. Ladies, gentlemen, I bid you all good night. Mr. President, Your Eminence, Duchess, you have the same rooms as usual. You, Monsieur de Richet, will find your room at the end of the corridor. Well, my friends, I am bone tired. I am off to my bed. See you in the morning. Good night, sir. I shall do likewise. Louis, I shall see you in the morning. Sleep well. Good night. See you tomorrow. Oh, man. It's been quite a day. Right. Where is my room? Duchess Emily Hillsborough. Monsieur Napoleon Bonaparte. Monsieur Jacques Perru. out of an old encyclopedia. The quorum guide. Johann von Wulner. President George Washington. <laughs> the 
Monseigneur, His Eminence Cardinal Piaggi. Godoy. Duchess Emily Hillsborough. His Eminence Cardinal Piaggi. Huh, that's me. Right. So what shall I do with this letter? It might be about my mother's disappearance. But if I open it, I'll be betraying Biagi's trust. What should I do? Damn, can't wait to open it, but I gave my word to Piaggi, so too bad. I'll wait until I hand it to mother. Nice room. Mortimer sure doesn't do things halfway. Judith beheading Holofernes. Ironic in a way, when you know that the artist represented herself as Judith beheading her mentor, who had raped her. Saint Jerome and the Angel. Yet again, art with political undertones with an image of a saint hearing voices. Saturn devouring his son. Again? I saw the same theme in the hall. I wouldn't like to be his son. The conversion of St. Paul by Caravaggio. It's incredible. It doesn't look like a copy, but I was sure the original was in Rome. St. Francis of Assisi in ecstasy before superior voices. It always amuses me to see how art gets used for propaganda purposes. Inferno by Dante. Abandon hope, all ye who enter here. Lovely lectures Mortimer is giving to his guests. Very jolly.
golden elixir.
Your turn. The servants are not very efficient. Durishe can't be far away. They'll find her soon. Their search time is restricted given that they must keep an eye on Adams. I can take care of her, you know. Yes. Well, in any case, I do thank you for bringing her to the island. From what I've understood, the search of de Richet's room hasn't turned up any... Not yet, no. But we've put her son in there. Perhaps he'll find something. Hmm. That might come in handy. Louis grows impatient at not yet having met the famous Lord Mortimer. He will meet him tomorrow. Oh, what a pity to lose a knight at the start of the game. Are you waiting for someone? A young French soldier. During our game of chess? Don't worry, Gregory. The game won't disappear. I'll have one of my men escort you back. Don't trouble yourself. I know my way out. Ah, good evening, gentlemen. Please forgive me for this late hour. It is never too late. And we have much to discuss. One last move? Don't worry. Our games always seem to end like this. Or always start like this. Come, come. Take a seat, my friend. A little nighttime stroll, Mr. President? There's nothing like it for a good night's sleep. Do not hesitate to ask a servant to show you back. The corridors seem quite safe. Peppermint, lime flower, and valerian. My miracle remedy when one can't get to sleep. A very good night to you, Mr. President. Thank you. And to you too, sir. I'm coming. I'm coming. Dear Monsieur de Richet, please excuse me, but I am unable to join you at present. However, rest assured that we are doing all we can to resolve the case that concerns us. By the way, enclosed, you will find a key that will enable you to retrieve the personal effects your mother left behind. Inspiration of St. Matthew, or Matthew writing his gospel, dictated to him by voices. Torture of Ixion, condemned by the gods to lose his mind because of his arrogance. Excuse me, am I bothering you? I was sleeping. I need your help. What's going on? Do you remember the young lady we spoke of in the hall? No. What's her name again? Elizabeth Adams. Well, she is the daughter of my friend, the Vice President, John Adams. But she is supposed to be dead. Yeah, that's bizarre. Fair enough. Good heavens! I was present at her funeral. It is disturbing indeed. Yes. 
I need to make sure it's her. That's where you come in. I want you to distract Elizabeth while I search her room. And perhaps get my hands on some important information. At least, I hope so. Elizabeth is in the small salon. If you hurry, you can still catch her. I just need ten minutes. But if my vision is true, there are two men nearby discussing very important issues, and one of them looks much like Mortimer. Washington is very kind, but I came to this island for my mother, not for his ghost stories. Count on me, sir. Thank you, my friend. Keep Elizabeth downstairs as long as possible. She must not return to her room. Trust me. According to Washington, Lady Adams is in the small salon. I better hurry. My son, oh, you are a godsend. What's the matter, Your Eminence? I believe a Miss Adams may be in danger. What do you mean? Do you hear that? She is being manhandled in this small salon. By whom? I don't know exactly. Uh, a thug, a Frenchman, it seems. By the cut of his cloth, I'd say he's a member of the French Revolutionary Government. You should do something, my son. Shit. I was supposed to make sure Adams wouldn't go back to her room. Don't worry, Your Eminence. I'll take care of it. Probably nothing to worry about. Do you want me to call for help? Please don't do anything. I'm sure with a little goodwill, everything will work out fine. Don't go and wake up the whole manor, please. Thank you, my son. May God watch over you. <laughs> Who do you think you are? Forget Sir. If we were in France, I'd have sent you to the guillotine for what you just said. Please, just let me go back to my room. Hey, you! Stay out of it! This is none of your business. I'm gonna teach this little slut how to behave. What the hell is going on? Huh? I don't think you know who I am. Stop. I beg you. I, I didn't mean to. Don't hit me, please, sir. Shit. Uh, if I step in, Adams might just run back uh, to your room. And if I do nothing, yes, Washington will have enough time to search, but this girl's gonna uh, suffer. Damn it, what should I do? Uh, you filthy whore! I apologize, have mercy. Please have mercy. Uh, no, uh, no! I apologize, no, no, no. Mercy, have mercy, no, no, no. Where's that smart mouth now? I'll teach you a little respect. No. Huh? No. <laughs> Look, you huh? dumbass. Are you deaf? She said she was sorry. Call me that again. Leave her alone. Are you looking for a slap, Sonny? That's what I thought. Now get out! I have to deal with this dirty slut. Well? Did you get time to search the room? Yes, I found out many things. Good. Did Elizabeth give you any trouble? Elizabeth? No. 
Well, you could have mentioned she was with a raving maniac, huh? What do you mean? She was with a Frenchman. He was about to beat her when I arrived. What the devil are you talking about? I thought he was going to kill the poor girl. Did you intervene? I did what was necessary to give you enough time to search her room. Good work, my friend. I knew that I could count on you. So tell me, did you find any information? Oh, yes. What I found is likely to upset you. What do you mean by that? Elizabeth is indeed the daughter of John Adams. Why pass her off as dead? I found her medical file. It appears that for many years, your mother was her personal doctor. From what I read, she behaved more like a butcher than a doctor. What are you talking about? But you're her friend. How can you call her a butcher? The entire medical file is annotated and signed in her own hand. Under what name? My mother uses at least ten aliases when she's on a case. These documents are signed by Dr. Beth Mopa, an anagram of Baphomet, an occult figure your mother was fond of whenever she was on a mission and wished to avoid justifying her actions. That is perhaps a coincidence. I'd like it to be. Do you believe your mother capable of torturing a child? My mother got her hands dirty for the common good, so don't be too quick to judge her. For the common good? We're talking about the vivisection of a child, of tattooing her from head to foot with a red hot iron. Stop this. For her fifth birthday, she inflicted the stigmata of Christ on her. And for her tenth birthday, a hysterectomy. What kind of gift is that My for a child? My mother's not a monster. I do not doubt that your mother meant well. But the techniques described in the file, it is pure torture. My mother has many faults, but she's not the cruel woman you describe. Believe what you will, but now you cannot say you were never told. Duke Manuel Godoy. Your Eminence, what are you doing here? I was worried about you, my son. Uh, how did it go with Miss Adams? Could have been worse. Let's say that Miss Adams will remember it for a couple of days. What? Did you not intervene? Of course not. What did you want me to do? That thug could have snapped me in half in two seconds. So, you prefer to let that fragile young lady take a beating rather than risk getting slapped around a bit yourself? Mr. Derice, your mother would not have been proud of you. Listen, next time it happens, join me instead of hiding behind the door. If you're gonna talk big, back it up. You should be ashamed. I will pray for your soul, my son. My son, I have another problem. I wanted to speak to you about something important. 
Do you still have my letter on you? The one I gave you in the hall? Why do you ask? I have a name to add to it. Here it is. Thank you, my son. Ah, I see that it's still sealed. I was right to put my trust in you, Louise. Now give me one second, please. I can't imagine what would have happened if I hadn't added this name to the list. Please, be sure to give this letter to Sarah the moment you see her. You can count on it. Have a good night. You're straying from your objective. Whew. I'm exhausted. I better go to bed. I'll search my room tomorrow. If Mother stayed here right before me, you never know. And Mortimer had better show up. All right. In my vision yesterday, I saw that Mother had this room before me. I better search the room. Who knows? Maybe she left me something behind.
writing material. The incredulity of St. Thomas. Why is Caravaggio represented St. Thomas putting his finger in the wound? Thomas looks on, but doesn't touch. The torture of Ixion, condemned by the gods to lose his mind because of his arrogance. Nothing. inspiration of St. Matthew, or Matthew writing his gospel, dictated to him. I haven't even had time to unpack my cases. Inferno by Dante. Abandon hope, all ye who enter here. Lovely lectures Mortimer is giving to his guests. Very jolly. There's a circle around the lock here. Must be the trunk Mortimer was talking about. The key should open it. There's a note. Effects of Serre de Richer to be given to her son, Louis. I should probably take it. I have no space left. I'll retrieve it later. I have no space left. I'll retrieve it later. Floor. Uh, just a bit worn out. I was hoping to find something leading to a secret passage. No, oh, this bookcase is well stocked. Oh, this book has been put back the wrong way round. A Voyage Around the World, the travel log of the explorer Louis Antoine de Bougainville. One of Mother's favorite books. What a coincidence. And I don't believe in coincidences. It's just too much. I don't know what's going on here, but if you felt threatened, I'll bet you'd leave a clue, wouldn't you, Mother? Found it. A faint sign of the order, barely visible. Mother, you undoubtedly must have hidden a clue in this book. Let's see if I can find anything else in this room. Not far from solving the puzzle, I must keep searching. Dante. Abandon hope, all ye who enter here. Lovely lectures Mortimer is giving to his guests. Very jolly.
here's something that will undermine my botanist appreciation for the local climate. Hmm. Let's recap. My mother was in this room. I found a rare edition of her favorite book. She must have left something behind. She must have used the writing materials. What if she used lemon juice instead? An old trick used to hide messages. A message using invisible ink. I bet she used a lemon to leave a message. Now, how do I reveal the message? The message is illegible. I have to keep searching. Apart from getting the book dirty, I can't see any use for this. A nice strong coffee, though. I have no space left. I'll retrieve it later. Secret writing. Many people use this method for their secret correspondences. Light the flame and the ink appears. Time to unpack my cases. size you up, you must pass by the Gorgon. Gorgon was the name of Medusa in Greek mythology. On the other hand, where all eyes size you up, I don't get it. And judging by the number of paintings in the manor, could be anywhere. After that, she adds, beware hero. The beast always charges the best protected soldier. And that's its weakness. What is my mother trying to tell me? Since you've gone to so much trouble, you must not have only found something important, but you must have also felt like you were in great danger. Now I'd better hurry and find that damn Medusa. Sir, dinner is served in the Red Salon. Typical. I'm not hungry. Please give my apologies to all the guests. 
Uh, Sir Holm requests your presence, sir. Well, I guess I'm just gonna have to wait before going and looking for my Medusa. Tell him I'll be there in a minute. No space left. I'll retrieve it later. If I get a chance, I may have to take a little tour through the rooms of the other guests. That's the door to Elizabeth's room. Excuse me, Monsieur de Richet. I really need to talk to you. Is this about last night? No, that was just a misunderstanding. I'm sure it was a little bit my fault, too. There's no excuse for that man's horrible behavior. You ought to tell Sir Holm. Look, the only thing that I care about is that I've lost something precious. I'm not worried about Jack Peru. I'm... I'm sorry. I should have stopped him from beating you. What's done is done. It was my fault, not yours. Don't say that. It's never the victim's fault. Look at your eye. My eye's nothing. Last night, I found out that your mother was on the island. What are you doing here? Same as everyone else, I accepted Lord Mortimer's invitation. I know your mother very well. Really? Yes, I have been in your mother's care ever since I was born. She nursed you? Oh, I wouldn't say nursed, no. I remember her stare, cold as ice. Her sadistic hands pressing over my mouth to silence me while I screamed in pain. I remember her knees, too. She held me down with them while she cut and burned scars into me. Hold on a minute. What do you mean? You can ask her when you see her. Huh. She's getting more and more agitated. Look, I've... I've got to go. Wait. I, I need to know more about you and my mother. Why did she put you through all of that? There must be some reason for what she did. What's the point of rubbing salt in the wounds? You're right, I... I don't want this conversation to turn into an interrogation. You've suffered enough already, I... I respect your silence. Please excuse me. Well, thank you. I know your little game. You're no different from the rest of them. 
You couldn't give a damn about me. The only thing you're interested in is finding out about your mother. Don't say that. Not, not everyone wants to use you. Some people care about you, don't they? Haven't you got a sister? Yes. I'm sure she loves you with all her heart. She's the only one who cares about me. I would have put an end to it all by now if it weren't for her. Since you insist, I'll tell you how I met your mother. Thanks for trusting me. You see, before I was born, my mother often suffered from hallucinations and fits of anger. Soon people could barely recognize her. She became a completely different person. So my father spent an enormous amount of money paying for the best doctors, but none of them were able to cure her. The last resort was to call a priest. So, is that what your father did? No. He went to an expert in the occult. Ah, my mother. Her reputation already extended beyond our borders. My mother's fit stopped at my birth, and Sarah de Richet concluded that the evil had passed into me. Not only did it encourage her to stay, but she took the opportunity to advise my father to... separate me from the rest of my family. That's how I was declared stillborn. My fate was decided that very day. It would coincide with my mother's frequent trips to America. I had my first fit when I was three. That's when your mother began her experiments to rid me of the evil inside. I understand how you feel, but I know my mother. I'm sure she had her reasons, even if it seems difficult to believe. Everything she put me through was all for nothing. My whole life was ruined for nothing. So what brings you here then? My father used to know Sir Holm. He offered to introduce me to the world's leading authority in the occult. Lord Mortimer. He was my last hope. Until I found out he had also invited your mother. It's got to be a coincidence. I don't believe for a second she's coming for you. You can't change my mind about this, Louis. My days are numbered, and I know it. What can I do for you, sir? I am at your service, day and night, sir. I would like to speak about your master, Lord Mortimer. Do please excuse me, sir, but I shall make no comment about my master. Is there anything else that sir would like to know? Yes. What can I find on the second floor? That floor is strictly reserved for Lord Mortimer, sir. In the west wing, on the second floor, are his private chambers. In the east wing, are the rooms reserved for Lord Mortimer's personal guests. 
At the moment, these rooms are reserved for Sir Holm, sir. But only authorized guests may access that area. Does sir have any more questions? What's on the first floor? The first floor is reserved for guests, sir. That is where sir will find his private rooms. The main corridor leads around the building. Three stairways will enable sir to return to the ground floor. It is also from there that sir will be able to reach the second floor. Thank you very much. Anything else, sir? Yes. Can you briefly describe the ground floor, please? Very well, sir. On the ground floor, there are mainly living rooms. Sir finds himself at present in the Grand Hall. From the Grand Hall, Sir can access, on one side, the small salon where the guests like to relax with a good book. From there, Sir can access the conference room, which is closed at present for preparations. That is where Lord Mortimer likes to gather all of his guests for talks. From the other side of the Grand Hall, Sir may access the dining room. That is where Sir's meals will be served. From the dining room, Sir may benefit from an exceptional view overlooking the island. It is also the best way to access the portrait gallery, where a large part of Lord Mortimer's works are exhibited. And in the gallery, Sir will also find access to the garden. But Sir may be reassured, the building is accessible on both sides, so that it surrounds the garden in question. So, so should not find cause to worry. No one has ever gotten lost. Yeah, except for my mother. Has Sir uh, another question? What can you tell me about the guests? Do excuse me, sir. But I am bound by discretion to say nothing about Lord Mortimer's guests, sir. Perhaps sir uh, would like to know something else? As I was unable to bring my personal effects with me, I was wondering if you could find me a few items. Of course, sir. What would you require? What's that book you're hiding in your jacket? The Sorrows of Young Werther by Goethe, sir, and I am not hiding it. Hand it to me, please. It is damaged, sir. I would never dare lend, sir, a book in such a pitiful state, sir. I took it to restore. Hang on, but it's mine. Beg pardon, sir? It's my book. I'm telling you, it's my book. With all due respect, sir, I hope sir will understand that I have doubts. You see, I found it in Lord Mortimer's library. Huh. There you are, then. That's exactly where I left it. I am quite put out, sir. I don't know what to say. In that case, I suggest you say nothing and hand it over. But I... Now. But, sir, I... Very well, sir. Here you are. May sir take good care of it. It is damaged. And you've damaged it as well? Well, bravo. Bravo. No, no, I didn't do anything. It wasn't me, sir. Say pardon. Pardon me, sir. Very good. There were some other things I wanted to go over with you.
Dear friends, I bid you welcome. I hope the night was not too short. Your Eminence, Duchess, Monsieur de Richet, allow me to introduce our new guests. They arrived during the night. Johann Christoph von Wollner, Minister of Religious Affairs and close aide of Frederick William II, King of Prussia. Napoleon Bonaparte, Lieutenant of the French Revolutionary Army. And Jacques Peru, French Revolutionary Tribunal Judge. Unfortunately, my friends, Lord Mortimer will not be joining us this morning, but he should be with us later. So, let us begin. What is Mortimer playing at? He tells me to come urgently and he sends no one to meet me? Uh... Pardon? Don't trouble yourself. Huh. Peru looks totally out of place here. Where did you find it? <laughs> He's counting the ten sets of cutlery around each plate? The man is completely lost. Thank you again for the wine, Your Highness. It is served every day at the king's table. I am delighted to be here. Volner and Piaggi seem to be getting along well. Surprising when you know Volner prohibited religious practices in Prussia. Renowned member of the Rose Qua Order, former Freemason, and great lover of alchemy. And look at Piaggi fawning over him. I really do have a problem digesting political protocol. My dear Johan, how are you? Glad to make landfall at last. And yourself? Very well. And your husband? He's poorly. The French Revolution gives him terrible headaches. Oh, I understand. I shall feel better too, as soon as the situation is settled. If by chance the French crisis is emulated in Berlin, there will always be a refuge for you in London, my dear. Your offer does you honor, Emily. But London is much closer to Paris than Berlin. Beware. The French are capable of sailing up the Thames straight to the Houses of Parliament. Oh, my friend, I am shaking in my clogs. <laughs> Is the wine to your liking? Very much so, Sir Gregory. Such complexity. Typically French. A Sauterne, isn't it? Absolutely! If I'm not mistaken, this is not Lord Mortimer's favourite wine. It is yours. In his absence, I have taken the liberty of making a slight deviation from the rule. But I count on your discretion. <laughs> Don't worry, I appreciate the same grape varieties as you. I remember the last time we tasted that nectar here at this table. The fine his minds of the century were present. And the last time we drank it, the orphanage in Bloomsbury was still in ruins. Would... would you repeat that? Oh, well, uh, I put some small effort into the works. The orphanage reopened just before Christmas. The bedrooms, washrooms, and the classrooms had all been refurbished. I... I don't know what to say. You have given the girls a wonderful Christmas gift. Thank you. I made a oh, promise. Dear. Now it mm. is done. <laughs> is everything all right? Yes, thank you. I had a moment of absence, but here I am again. Oh. My lord, I only know the prestige of your name. Might I have the honor of getting to know you a little better? You are Louis Maurras de Richet. De Richet? De Richet? A name with a nobiliary particle. Are you descended from a noble line? Yes, I heard the news. What a story. I am just a simple French citizen. Really? Oh, you seem nothing like a commoner. <laughs> Especially compared to that wretch over there sharing our meal. Show us your deeds. And you, sir? Have you any information on this Napoleon? <laughs> Not really, no. Well, what do you think, madam? <laughs> what is this Bonaparte doing here? The presence of a soldier is never a good sign. It can only mean there's going to be further war. 
To answer your question, I only know that his family were in favor of the revolution, and that it almost cost them their lives. Thank you, that's helpful. Monsieur de Richet, it would seem we have common interests. Could we speak in private, please? Mm -hmm. uh, please, go ahead. Uh, what do you want to know? <laughs> Lord Mortimer and the Golden Order, through your mother, have concluded a financial agreement. Stay composed, Louis. I'm listening. An agreement for cannons. Lord Mortimer assured me that you are to take over the project on behalf of your mother. You must know that I am deeply sorry about their disappearance, but I must validate the deal urgently if I want to be able to organize things properly. I haven't seen Lord Mortimer yet. I'm afraid I'll be unable to answer your questions. He assured me that you could replace your mother during her absence. I appreciate his confidence, but still, this is a bit hasty. But please continue. Of course, but I need to know if I can count you among my allies. Well, of course. And for that, I have a little question for you. The agreement stipulates an aid of 50,000 Louis d'or for 200 cannon. Surely such an amount will buy twice as many cannons. Don't try to pull a fast one on me. We're both young, but we are not naive. Please don't be offended. I just wanted to make sure you knew what you were talking about. And I am reassured. I have one last question I would like to pose to you. We don't know each other yet, you and I. And I need to make sure that we both share the same vision for the future of France. Given the hard times that have befallen our beautiful country, what do you think it would take to restore its uh, luster? I think what France is lacking today is a truly strong leader ready to govern her. Someone who will restore her luster, who will propel her forward so once again she becomes a proud nation respected by all. A man capable of both rebuilding the country from the inside and, at the same time, developing exterior relations. Someone with a vision, I think. The right person still remains to be found. You're right, my friend. I hear your words and I agree. Monsieur de Richer, I am reassured. I am very happy to have met you. Lord Mortimer was right to put his trust in you. I hope to work with you in the very near future. I would like to thank you for your support by offering you this humble little gift. Hmm. Reflections on the revolution in France. Monsieur Bonaparte, I thank you for this gesture and please know that I too am delighted to have met you. My friends, I would like to say a few words, please. I would like to thank Lord Mortimer and you, Sir Holm, for bringing us all together here. Those of us for whom it is not the first time here, like me, are all trembling in sweet anticipation of the arrival of our host. For the rest, I would like to reassure you that Lord Mortimer always has a few surprising projects to propose. <laughs> but I can assure you that each and every one of us has always benefited from them. <laughs> the last time I came to this place, Lord Mortimer offered to help me in my electoral campaign for the presidency of the United States. And it is imminently clear that his support was an invaluable aid to us. We are here among like-minded people. So let us put aside the conflicts in which some of our nations find themselves at present. So, I raise my glass in honor of you all, my new and old friends. I trust you shall not be disappointed, Mr. Washington. Washington is a very gifted speaker. 
Leave him for five minutes with sworn enemies and he'll convince them to be friends for life. Right, we shall meet again tomorrow. All the guests will be present, as well as Lord Mortimer, I hope. Until then, I trust you will find plenty to keep you amused. Let's recap. Before dinner, I was going to investigate my mother's message. I've got to find the place where all eyes size you up. is surrounded by a triple circle. I have no space left. I'll retrieve it later. Dining on ham. Well, that's very appetizing. Discourse on the Method by Descartes. This book changed the way I looked at the world. Circe preparing wine. What better trap for Ulysses? Mm -hmm. 
well, your eminence. Do you still have any room left? Ah, my son, the sin of gluttony is the most difficult of all in my eyes. Nevertheless, what a charming moment we have had together. I'm delighted I was able to talk to Mr. Von Volner. We hadn't spoken to each other for an eternity. Yes, I noticed that your eminence knew a fair number of people at the table. The benefit of age, my son. This isn't my first invitation to Lord Mortimer's. You will see, it's the perfect place to make new friends. Indeed, I noticed that you and Mr. Bonaparte had already begun. Ah, I adapt quickly to local customs. It's what I was taught. (laughs) And you are right to do so, my son. But tell me, have you had any news of your mother since your arrival? (sighs) Alas, still nothing, your minutes. But I still haven't been able to meet Lord Mortimer. Do not worry. It is typical of him. What can I say? Lord Mortimer is a very busy man. I should think you are beginning to worry. Well, I I must admit, Your Eminence, indeed it does worry me. I understand, but continue to have faith in Sarah. You'll see, I'm sure, that in a few days we'll all be laughing together. That's all I hope for, Your Eminence. But while I have you with me, I I have a question for you. Go ahead, Louis. What can I do for you? As I haven't visited all the manor yet, I wondered if you hadn't seen a Medusa by any chance. I beg your pardon? Yes, La la Gorgogne, the Medusa from Greek mythology. Would you have seen one in any shape or form? Not at all, my son. I'm not sure what you're getting at, but unfortunately I'm not going to be of any use to you. Thank you anyway, Your Eminence. I won't take up any more of your time. On that last word, then I shall leave you to fight your demons. See you later, Your Eminence. See you later, my son. Amber Crystals.
and an old sesterce from Roman Gaul. A few pages out of an old encyclopedia. The Miller Brothers. Mother expressly forbade me from reading it. Atrus. The Miller Brothers. Mother expressly forbade me from reading it. size you up. Chances are, that's the room my mother spoke of. And she also spoke of a Medusa. Should I go and try to find the creature now? dining with Louis XIV. The king's posture is surprising. It's almost as if he's addressing someone in the assembly. Liberty or Death by Regnault. Well, I'll take liberty, please. But I do understand his choice, even though it seems radical. Allegory regarding the decoration of the rights of men. That's the least you could say. Christ Crucified by Velasquez. Look, someone's left a note there. Reserved for the Duke of Alquidia. The Song of Roland. Roland feeleth his death is near, his brain is oozing by either ear. With his brain oozing, it's already remarkable that he can feel anything. Ah, Francois Premier. Receiving the Holy Family, a painting by Raphael. Amber Crystals. The Fall of Phaeton, another painting by Rubens. Poor Phaeton. Struck by lightning for borrowing his father's chariot and losing control of it. Moral, don't steal dad's chariot. Amber Crystals. The Company by Rembrandt. A meeting between Louis XIV and Philippe V. I wonder why Mortimer is particularly fond of this painting. The Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci. The last day before his crucifixion, 
Jesus announces that he will be betrayed by one of his disciples. Celia, that name means nothing to me. Allegory regarding the decoration of the rights of men. That's the least you could say. Painting with no name. I've got to find out what Mother was trying to do with her. The Medusa. A hero armed with a sword? Hmm. A hero with a lantern. And the last one holding a shield. I'll stake my life on it. All the statues form a single scene together. The poor devils are about to face the beast. Let's give them a helping hand. Devil's Thorn. I'll keep it. Origin of myths, a reinterpretation of legendary creatures. Just what I need. The text is in French on the left hand page and in Latin on the right hand. Let's find the chapter on the Medusa. Hang on. This version is significantly different from the regular one. It recounts how men have always belittled women in society. Harpies, mermaids, the chimera, the hydra, the gorgons. Ah, the section on the Medusa. While some of the heroes divert attention from the gorgon, the hero with the sword brandishes his weapon at the Medusa. Hang on. This version is significantly different from the regular one. It recounts how men have always belittled women in society. Harpies, mermaids, the chimera, the hydra, the gorgons. Ah, the section on the Medusa. While some of the heroes divert attention from the gorgon, the hero with the sword brandishes his weapon at the Medusa. Now, Louis, it's time to keep a logical mind, as every good scientist should. The aim is to defeat the Medusa. So what can the lantern be for? To light up the Medusa? <laughs> Hardly likely. The hero holding the lantern will be easy prey, and the shield will be of no use. To light up the sword? No, that makes no sense. So that leaves the shield. 
Hmm. I wonder if the aim is to play with the light. If I turn the shield right, the light would be reflected. The ray of light will perturb the Medusa and focus her attention on the best protected hero. Pretty smart. But it also means I have to make sure I get the shield position just right. Let's think. To vanquish the beast, the statues have to be lined up in a specific order. What can the shield be for? To protect its holder? <laughs> Why not? But in that case, what's the lantern for? Step back and take a second, Louis. Be logical, but open-minded. Think outside the box. Nobody said a statue has to have only one use. I wonder if the lantern was to distract the Medusa. This shield can both protect the holder and also reflect the light from the lantern to distract the beast. In other words, I'll have to make an angle of 90 degrees between the lantern and the Medusa by turning the shield to face the sword. If Mortimer's the one who thought of all this stuff, then honestly, he must have a screw loose. Crazy idea, but worth a shot. Hmm, the mechanism is worn here. Whenever the shield is not turned toward the sword, the machinery freezes up. The statue must have been in this position most of the time, betrayed by the marks of time. So that makes it easy. The shield must face the sword. Now, Louis, it's time to keep a logical mind, as every good scientist should. The aim is to defeat the Medusa, so what can the lantern be for? To light up the Medusa? <laughs> Hardly likely. The hero holding the lantern will be easy prey, and the shield will be of no use. To light up the sword? No, that makes no sense. So that leaves the shield. Hmm, I wonder if the aim is to play with the light. If I turn the shield right, the light would be reflected. The ray of light will perturb the Medusa and focus her attention on the best protected hero.
think. To vanquish the beast, the statues have to be lined up in a specific order. What can this shield be for? To protect its holder? Why not? But in that case, what's the lantern for? Step back and take a second, Louis. Be logical, but open-minded. Think outside the box. Nobody said a statue has to have only one use. I wonder if the lantern was to distract the Medusa. This sh can both protect the holder and also reflect the light from the lantern to distract the beast. In other words, I'll have to make an angle of 90 degrees between the lantern and the Medusa by turning the shield to face the sword. If Mortimer is the one who thought of all this stuff, then honestly, he must have a screw loose. Crazy idea, but worth a shot. In Greek mythology, anyone who looked into the eyes of the Medusa turned to stone, so the monster's statue must be turned towards someone who can protect their eyes. It can only be the hero holding the shield. The clue I found said, beware hero, the beast always charges the best protected. That is its weakness. That's the key. The best protected hero is the one holding the shield. Thank you, Mother. For Pete's sake, Emily! You scared the pants off me. Don't ever do that again. Well, keep your nose out of my business, then. I don't know what you're talking about. Stop fooling around and tell me what you're doing here. I was feeling a bit peckish. I went in search of the kitchen and I ended up here. Your sense of direction is mind-boggling, isn't it? Well, no matter. I'll tolerate your presence this one time. Now, since you're here, make yourself useful. Look around on your side. I'll do the same on mine. And if you find anything of interest, let me know. Oh yeah, in your dreams. At your service, madam. The heavenly symbols refer to Pandora's box. Emily, I'm pretty sure I've got Pandora's box. Of course you have. You see an earthen pot and you immediately assume it can only be Pandora's box. Logical. What I like about you, Louis, is that you never fail to surprise me. Actually, I'd rather not open it. You're afraid, aren't you? Have you ever heard of the Ark of the Covenant? Yes. A piece of advice. If you come across it, don't open it. You'll thank me. A golden fleece. 
It's freezing. Hurry up. Do you think that can really be Jason's golden fleece? No. You are aware that Jason and the Argonauts is a myth, aren't you? But Mortimer has been protecting this hide. It must be of great value, don't you think? Certainly of historical value. This kind of hide is still used by gold diggers in Eastern Europe. Now you see how easy it is to obtain a legend. Why do you have to act so nonchalant every time I show you something? Louis, anyone can kill a sheep, rip off its hide, and say it's the Golden Fleece. We're at Lord Mortimer's, not at some farmyard fair. You're just too skeptical. And you have a tendency to believe anything. Talk about an unlikely pair. Yet, you know opposites attract, don't you? An unofficial gospel? You'd be more likely to find this kind of book at the Vatican. Nothing special. The library at Buckingham has three. How did the English manage to get their hands on them? When someone wants to attract the attention of the world's leading power, somehow the gifts just pour in. You wouldn't have gone to the Vatican recently, would you? Are you calling me a thief? Certainly not. Never entered my mind. Mortimer is the author of this work. It talks about his passion for art. I found an amazing ring. And there's an inscription engraved on it. You're married. Why don't you wear a wedding ring? You mean wear something just to prove your love, not my style. Carry on searching. Guess what I found? The Holy Grail. Older than that. A piece of Noah's Ark. Not that old. This could go on for hours. Just tell me. Caesar's laurel wreath. The workmanship on this crown is amazing. The finesse of the gold laurel leaves is beautiful. A crown worthy of an emperor. I'd stake my life that it's the genuine article. I can just see Mortimer dressed in a toga, wearing a laurel wreath, strutting around his manor all day long. You have a curious idea of Mortimer. Why? He's eccentric, like all the English are, isn't he? Well, if Peru stands for French grace, then if I were you, I wouldn't be making that sort of remark. Oh, looks like a pamphlet on different political regimes, written by Mortimer himself. Here's something interesting. A manor in Maine, hundreds of acres of land in Catalonia, properties in Shanghai. Incredible. Some of these deeds are over 600 years old, and all signed by the hand of Mortimer. I wonder if that's what inspired my mother's attention. How come all these documents have Mortimer's signature on them? Do you think all these properties really belong to him? See those fine scratches around the words? Yes, and? The ink barely spreads on the paper. It spreads exactly the same way on the signature. The deed was written using the same ink. If it is a fake, then it's a professional job. Mm -hmm. 
Several people have played the part of Mortimer, a part that has been passed down from generation to generation. Different men, but with one sole identity. An intriguing hypothesis, and yet less twisted than some of my previous cases. At last, you finally agree with me about something. These documents are intriguing, but do you really think that's what attracted your mother's attention here? And how do you know my mother was interested in this room? I didn't know, I just supposed she was. And you just confirmed it. So, do you think she found what she came for? I don't know. She was obsessed with Mortimer, and I must confess, these property deeds are troubling. If that's the case, why would she have left them? Once again, I don't know. We'll have to ask her when we find her. And what's your take? Why keep such a collection hidden in a secret room? Any thoughts? Mortimer has every reason in the world to conceal it, even if only to keep it from people like us. Hey, Emily, we're not thieves. We're only looking. I wonder why my mother didn't make it clear what she was interested in here. She didn't have time to write it down, or maybe she wasn't sure of what she was looking for. Or she wanted to protect her discoveries. It's disturbing. You'll just have to search the rest of the room. Maybe we'll find something. What is that you found? A cameo pendant. What's going on? Nothing. For crying out loud, Emily, you lunged for that jewel like your life depended on it. Tell me what this is about. No. We just met, Louis. I like you, but I can't just suddenly open myself up like a book to you. Listen, Emily. It seems pretty obvious to me that you haven't come here for the sole purpose of sampling Mortimer's cellar. Stop all the clever evasions and just trust me. And why the hell should I place my trust in you, Louis? When are you going to understand that I just want to help you? What do you expect? That I'll fall into your arms and say yes to everything you want? What are you talking about? I'm only asking you to trust me a little. If only on principle, as a member of the Golden Order, for example. I'll admit you are fairly reliable. That's it? I was expecting more. Well, I'm prepared to trust you when it comes to choosing a French cheese. But I've nothing to gain by confiding in you any further than that. Nothing to gain? Damn it, Emily! I'm only trying to help you. Stop needing to gain something all the time. Because you think I need help. Just like everyone, you have your strengths and your weaknesses. And there's no use pretending otherwise. Ha! And I bet you found out where I'm weak, haven't you? You think your scathing wit protects you, but in fact, it makes you blind. No sooner have people introduced themselves than you already see them in a bad light. You play the part of a strong woman, and yes, you are a strong woman, of course, but what I see is a sensitive young lady who lacks self-confidence. Stop adopting a defensive posture, and you'll see just how quickly new doors will open. There is some truth to what you say. I might have some weaknesses, but I don't need your help to overcome them. And I'm simply not contemplating collaborating with anyone at this time. Do you understand? Oh, it's crystal clear. You don't like people telling you what to do, and you do like giving the orders to everyone. If I were the matron you speak of, I would have found an underling to search this place, and I would be sound asleep in my bed. I already have a work partner. 
I know my weaknesses. I don't doubt that your abilities will be of use to me, but I already have all that, thanks to my teammate. Is there any chance you might tell me who he is? Mm, no, I've already said too much. Consider yourself lucky I've even given you this much. It's extremely rare, believe me. Come on, don't stop now that you've come this far. You know that eventually I'll end up making you talk. Well, since no one can resist you, let's see if you can guess who my partner is. You're a gambler? So, your partner is... Chances are, you're working with a member of the Order. The only members of the Order other than ourselves are your mother and Mr. Washington. The former has sadly gone missing. As for the latter, I knew nothing of his arrival. Incidentally, you must have noticed how inefficiently our Order communicates internationally. It's as obvious as it is surprising. You're my mother's hard-hitting partner. Oh, God, do you really believe the nonsense that comes out of your mouth? Well, a second ago I did, a little. Sorry, Louis, your mother is not my partner. Your husband, of course. My husband? He can't even walk without a cane. Poor old man. Let him live out the rest of his days in peace. How nice for him. Right, time is short. You haven't convinced me. I prefer to remain discreet. Don't take it the wrong way. All I can tell you is I'm looking for my sister. And if I reacted so strongly at the sight of the cameo pendant, it's because I thought it belonged to her. But it doesn't. I understand. I won't insist. It's time to leave. So, what do you think of our first adventure? I must admit, it has been fun by your side. Same here. Oh. 
Oh, she's been drinking too much again. Louis, I need to talk to you right now. Good evening, Elizabeth. Actually, this is not a good time. I'm begging you, please don't leave me alone. I'll be waiting for you in your room, but don't be late. I was sure there was a certain je ne sais quoi between us. Louis, we need to talk now. Otherwise, it'll be too late. Looks like Elizabeth really needs me, but if I start talking to her, for sure Emily won't wait for me. What should I do? Sorry, Emily, but I can't leave Elizabeth like this. All right, Elizabeth. How can I help? Thank you. Come on, follow me. Well, Elizabeth, what was so urgent? For God's sakes, what happened in here? I really need to talk to you, Louis, right now. Does Lord Mortimer know the mess you've made of your room? Listen to me, damn it! My days are numbered. Elizabeth, I don't know if it's about my mother again, but I'm telling you, you've nothing to be afraid of. She didn't come here for you. I saw her. Saw who? You saw my mother? When? Just last night. I went out to walk along the cliff top and I saw her in the distance. She tried to hide right away, but I'm sure it was her. Are you saying you recognize my mother in the middle of the night while she was hiding? Yes, Louis. I know it was her. You just said she was far away, right? In the middle of the night. And the exterior of the island isn't exactly well lit. Listen, I'm telling you it was her. Did you talk to each other? No, she was far away. I, I didn't make any noise and then she was gone. Have you told anyone you've seen her? Sir Holm? Mortimer? You don't understand. It's her. She's here. Yes, I understand. No, you're not listening. The moment I saw her, I was overcome by spasms. She's here. I'm telling you, it was her. Yes, I need something to calm me down. No thanks, I, I'd better not. Listen, if you want me to tell you everything, you have to drink with me, Louis. What I have to say to you is of the utmost importance. I'll drink with you, but let's go easy on it, okay? I don't know where she gets her rot cut from, but Frankly, it's disgusting. You know, Louis, when I came here, it was in the hope of getting help. I've only just now realized that I've been drawn here into a trap. Whoa. The alcohol's... <sighs> gone to my head. Here. The Condemned's Last Drink. Elizabeth, alcohol never solves anything. I'm gonna stop now. Listen up. You want to know what your mother was capable of, right? You want to know the reason why? Well, you're gonna have to follow me to the bottom of the abyss, Louis. Either drink or get out. No, I won't drink. All right, Louie, then get the hell out of here. You're incapable of opening your eyes, so be it. Get out!
Why the hell did I go with Elizabeth? I could have spent the night with Emily, but no. I had to go play the night with a big heart. Oh, well, never mind. Tomorrow's another day. Monsieur de Richet, I am arresting you for the murder of Elizabeth Adams. What the hell is going on? You are in deep trouble, my young friend. Yes. 